Previously on the new hire. I'm born dead. I'm born blind. I have Down syndrome. I have autism. I spoke to four unique individuals looking for the job of their dreams. Some have succeeded. You will set the precedence to be the first deaf driver ever in our container logistics industry. While others have hit roadblocks in the pursuit of their ambitions. In the full running kitchen, it's a bit difficult or a bit tough. When you walk to the kitchen, it's all surrounded by heat, knives, ages. We can't babysit. In this episode, we find out what it takes for them to land the job of their dreams and to stay in it. Will Elena, Trevor, Wei Jin and Nuro have the drive and discipline to stick it out? Will their bosses find the value in helping them fit in? Try to get the wrapping done quickly. One, two, three, four. Done. My name is Grace Lee Koo and this is The New Hire. Twenty-two-year-old Trevor is a Polytechnic graduate with a diploma in Multimedia Studies. He has been looking for a job as a video editor or content creator, but he has found such roles hard to come by. It's a bit like a roller coaster ride for me, and it felt like very emotional at some times. I went for some face-to-face -face interviews. Uh, fortunately, they haven't gone back to me, which left me a bit devastated which was why I previously brought Trevor to see a life coach, Eugene. You shouldn't straight away say, oh, I have autism. The first thing is to give a good impression first. Eugene suggested that Trevor revamp his CV, which he did. However... When I first laid eyes on Trevor's revamped CV, I did think it reflected his whimsical style, full of his personality, but I did wonder if this was something potential employers in the industry are looking for in designers. Fortunately, this young man isn't a one-trick pony. He has multiple interests and hobbies. Dancing, singing, baking, and one of those has landed him an unexpected opportunity. Today was my first day at Bakery Brera. I was nervous uh, if I was going to mess anything up. Putting the cheese, about this much, not much more. This is about five grams. So five grams of Parmesan. Yeah. You okay? Uh, I think so. Looks think okay from here. I'm just trying to be very... Gentle with the parmesan. See if they can do it a little bit quicker because we got some more space for it. Oh, oh dear. Okay, I'll try to do it as fast as I can. Okay. Trevor is slow, but sometimes we notice, oops, he's getting really slow and get tied up in details. He will slow everybody else down. Let him work in the crossing room, for example. The dough is very thin and, and it contains butter. If everybody else slows down, the butter will melt, the dough will become very soft, the shape will be going out of shape. He wants to do it so perfect, but he forgets totally about the time. I'm trying to do it as fast as I can, but I don't want to rush them. Faster? Faster. As someone who runs a theatre company that works with autistic talents, I empathise with Franz. It is a documented fact that autistic people do exhibit issues when it comes to grasping the passages of time as they go about their daily lives. So I remember one of my autistic actors, he was constantly late for rehearsals. And at first we were thinking, is it a public transport issue where he has issues navigating his environment? And then I realised it was actually time management. Can I just ask, um, do you all uh, understand me when I'm speaking? Louder. Yeah, do you, I don't uh, for, Do you all um, understand me when I'm speaking? Uh, honestly, no. Not really. 
<laughs> we have trouble understanding what you say. Maybe because you tend to have an uh, accent. He has a little bit of an American English slang. It is indeed a little bit hard to understand him. Messy, but fun. Sorry? But just as uh, very messy, but it's very fun, actually. Yep. I asked him why he, he adopted uh, an American slang. He says he learned his English from TV shows, children's shows like Barney, Barney the Dinosaurs and things like this. When I got the feedback that his colleagues have issues understanding him in the workplace, I decided to do a little digging. I did some reading online and I found this ebook, and this is what it said. Imitating accents is very common, particularly accents the child with autism will hear on television. This basically explains what Franz has been saying about Trevor's accent and how he picked it up from watching Barney. While Trevor's colleagues are struggling to understand him, Alina is putting in the effort to make sure she understands as much of what she hears as possible. It's a week to Elena's first day of work as a haulage driver. Every time you hear a beeping tone, I need you to press the respond button. Mm. Even if it's really soft, just press when you hear. Hearing it, I think a misconception that people have is that it's just some amplifier. But hearing it these days are a lot more sophisticated. You have things like artificial intelligence, a deep neural network trained by 12 million real-life sounds. It's a system that has taught itself through experience on how to best create contrast between speech and, say, background sounds, so that those background sounds are accessible, but they're not intrusive. Let me just check the device briefly first. A, E, O, M, S, S, O. So we did two tests. The first measurement was without hearing aid. So the lower down the graph, the louder the sound is, so the more severe the hearing loss is. Any sound that is below this line, she would have access to them, even without hearing it. But anything above, she won't be able to hear them. So you can see that she's missing out on a lot. We did a second measurement, and that is with her hearing aid. Now the line has shifted upwards. So this means that she's getting access to more sounds. So maybe some vowels, she will have access to it. But the consonants remain very soft, so she can't hear them. So if we were to say maybe like bus, she wouldn't be able to hear s, she will only hear ba. There might still be certain limitation when it comes to speech understanding, because she doesn't have access to those consonants with your co-worker, let them know that you might need them to repeat if they can phrase their sentences slightly differently to help you understand better. During the hearing test with Si Hui, the results made me realise that this information should not be hidden from co-workers but actually shared. From the graphs we saw, there were certain alphabet sounds that she would not be able to hear. Certain things like phone rings to fire alarms. This is important knowledge for her co-workers to understand her abilities better. Good morning, Wei Jian. Hi. Yeah, good morning. Ready for work? Yes. Wei Jian is 40 years old and lives with Down syndrome. He enjoys cleaning and housekeeping. My favorite assignment is cleaning. Clean all the tables, chairs, glass, and window sills. Starting today, he'll be doing exactly that for a staff cafeteria. Although this wouldn't be Wei Jian's first cleaning job. What happened at your last job? Sentosa, uh, hot down. What happened? What happened at your last job? My anger management manager fired me. Okay, and, and clearly that 
that you don't feel good about that, right? No. I must control myself. I must control my head not to pick up things and put it around. So what can you do to the, um, uh, deal with the nerves? What can you do to huh? calm yourself down? I don't know what I'm talking. My, my, my brain really is something wrong. I cannot do it. I cannot... I cannot, I cannot... I cannot concentrate. Chatting with Wei Jian made me realize how challenging it is for him to communicate his thoughts and how equally challenging it would be for his co-workers to teach him the ropes. Wei Jian, you have to scrub. Put down the fork and spoon. Mm, then scrub first. To overcome those hurdles, the Down Syndrome Association has assigned Shuhada to be Wei Jian's job coach to teach him step by step how to perform his tasks and also to advise his colleagues on how to work with him. So right now, what Regent is based on, it's called the on-the-job training, OJT in short. It could be three months, it could be six months. Once he has completed this training and has clocked in a certain hours, we will then review and assess him to see whether um, is he ready to be placed in the open employment market. For this training, Wei Jian will only be working at this cafeteria once a week. At the end of three months, Shu Hada will assess if Wei Jian is ready to venture out into the open job market or needs to have his training extended by another three months. Then the spoon that you drop on the floor, you need to wash again. You cannot pick up and then put it, understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The job coach will need to be on site to support Wei Jian because sometimes he might wonder or tend to forget what are the do's and the don'ts. You go and wash it again and make sure this place cannot be wet. Okay. Wei Jian was actually dismissed from one of his previous jobs. Reason being because he's not able to perform the task well. He's not able to communicate. Uh, with the staff there of uh, what he actually needed help with. And then once he gets um, angry, he gets he tends to be more physical. He needed anger management. There are incidents that um, happened. He wanted to choose the food for lunch when Wei Jian just froze in front of his colleague during the selection of food. He just stood still, not even uttering um, a single word. The colleague was trying to you know, coax him and ask him, what is it? But he was not able to express himself. What actually happened at the end, we actually asked him, why did you just uh, froze? Basically, he was just unhappy. The chicken uh, that he wanted to eat just wasn't there for him during lunch. He tends to have these meltdowns. He should know how to manage it before he can be suitable for the open employment market. This is not there's a lot of um, tender loving care that needs to be given to him so that um, he's able to excel and um, you know uh, perform in his tasks. Good morning. Good morning, Wijian. So whenever he okay. arrives at the workplace, he will report to uh, Auntie Jennifer to actually ask what is the task needed to do for the day. And what we do is to teach the colleague strategies to accommodate to his needs and his wants. Yeah. What do you choose the food? I choose curry chicken. Okay. When he is able to gel or he's able to, you know, work together well alongside with his co-worker, I think it should not be a problem.
Chef Andre Jamil leads a team of highly skilled cooks who function like a well-oiled machine in the kitchen. A bustling workplace and plenty of potential hazards for a blind person. My name is Nurul. I'm born blind. I want to explore jobs like cooking, baking or even barista. Kitchen is a fast-paced uh, operation. During the service, I have to make sure that everybody knows what is what, uh, where this thing goes and, and how long I need. In 20 minutes, okay, I need to have the food out. I need people to shout how long, how fast or where is it now, how long more can I fire. One soup potato, one barang and rice. I think Nuru will have a big problem adapting to that. So what do you think are her chances of ever making it as a blind chef in Singapore in a commercial kitchen? It's difficult or it's near impossible, should I say. Okay, but uh, pop-up, I think it's, it's achievable. If she want to touch the food, she has to have get that food hygiene cert. It's a two-day course. They have to actually go through a training, uh, an on-hand training where we have to do to show the trainer that we understand the basic hygiene in, in FMB. The food safety course mentioned by Chef Andre is curated by the Singapore Food Agency. But the training is done by third-party service providers approved by the agency. To pass, trainees will need to take a written and a practical test, both of which might be inaccessible for Nuru. I've located 24 service providers and we will have to call them one by one to see which one of them would be accessible to the needs of a blind participant. It's about exposing Nuru to the grind because I've realised that she's often had opportunities handed to her. From arts to athletics, even her job as a server at Dining in the Dark, Nurul's opportunities in life to date were sourced for her by other people or organisations. This will be the first time that Nurul is playing such a direct role in setting up an opportunity for herself. I've done my homework and I have a list of training providers right here on my laptop. Mm -hmm. We are going to call them one by one over the phone mm -hmm. and you're going to try to get on one of these courses. All right. Hi, good morning. Hello, good morning. My name is Nurul. I would like to ask, um, do you provide um, the food safety level one course? Yes, we do. How can I assist you? I would like to uh, attend the course, however, I am blind. Okay. Uh, you are partially blind or full, fully blind? Uh, fully blind. I still need to check with my boss in regards to this. Will that be okay for you if I give you a call back? Okay. okay. I'll, I'll take you again. Okay? Thank you. Thanks, bye. Uh, I will actually give a call back uh, shortly. So let me um, advise with my director first. Okay, I check with my trainer if they are able to assist you. Alright, sure. Because recently... Can I call you back? Okay, can. This one, I have to check with the trainer before getting back to you. I will check with the authorities whether it is applicable or not. We don't want to have to tell you it's okay, but in the end, it's not accepted uh, by the authorities. Okay. okay, thank you thank so you. much. Welcome. Bye. Bye. Oh, my goodness. Oh. I noticed you were a bit nervous, you keep nudging me. What was it that you were wanting me to jump in with? Oh, I, I, I was a bit unsure what to say. Because usually I never um, do such making inquiry phone calls. People do it on my behalf. You need to come across as this is serious. Oh. If you just go like, Hi, I'm Nuru, I'm blind, I want to do this course. It suggests that, oh, you've got nothing else better to do, I'm just going to try it out. And people are more likely to say no to that. Wouldn't you agree? Yep. Okay? okay, so bring across the fact that this is important to you. You need this. You need this in order to work, Nuru. Yes. Yes? Yes. All right. Uh, good morning. How can I help you? Good morning. Okay. My name is Nurul. I would like to ask if you have the food safety level one course. Yes, we do have. I would like to know if the course is accessible for blind people. Uh, I'm sorry, no. It would be difficult for the person who is blind to attend. 
How about a, the blind person bring along a companion? I think you're better, right? I understand. Hold on, I'll give me a minute here. Uh, sorry, uh, we won't be able to accommodate because the class sizes are big, like 20 packs to one train. Yeah, mm-hmm. practical would be a problem. Um, okay, I check in my trainer if they are able to assist you. Blind people for this program, I don't think so. Because there is a written assessment and also practical assessment. How you want to go about the class? Because there's theory, then PowerPoint, then got picture to show. I'm not sure whether it's comfortable for you or not. Uh, I can send you the information via the email. You can take a look at it and Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Thank you so very much. Thank you. And that was the last number. Alright. How do you feel now? A bit relief. I feel like, wow. I don't believe that I could actually initiate some conversations because usually I'm the very quiet type. Exactly. And just now? I decided to take charge and take control. So we went through the entire list. But there is no definite yes. There were no organisation out there who basically came in and said that, yes, we are accessible to a blind participant. Yes, our setup is ready for a blind participant. I feel stuck. I cannot move. I feel that it's a huge obstacle that preventing me um, to cross the river, to go to the opposite side or go to the next step. Working in the kitchen is not a viable career for me. After six months of job rejections, Elena's finally started work as a prime mover driver at Holio, a tech startup whose main calling card is their ride-hailing app for haulage companies. Okay, hand over to you for the vehicle orientation. Sure, no Thank problem. You. Thank you. Welcome to your new trucks. This is uh, the latest model and the latest version. It's Euro 6. So this is a FM. 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 Model is FM, 420 horsepower. Four, M420. Yes. Oh. Anything that you are not sure, um, please highlight to me. Okay. okay. On my first day of work, Hanu put me in touch of Lori. It was very big regret for the I need to understand everything that she had to me. You need to do a regeneration on the truck, on oh. the exhaust. Uh, am I talking too fast a bit? Uh, yeah, I go a bit slow. Okay, I go bit slow. And I, we, yeah, we can, no problem, no problem. Okay. Okay. Open up. Okay. Now, this will be an engine oil dipstick. Engine oil dipstick will be a twist, then you pull it out. What is for? Check the engine oil level. This will be your maximum level on your engine oil. This will be your minimum. So anything in between or upper here is alright. There are so many information that I have to learn. It's very difficult for me to learn everything. I'm going to teach you today on the use of our app. I've already assigned you the job. Press on the start job. Elena is also introduced to Holio's app in preparation for the day when she begins making her own collections and deliveries. You will see the container number, the location of the place that you need to do the pickup. Right. Once you have done the pickup, what you need to do is you can scroll down and insert the container number and the seal number. This app is very good because it's dev friendly. Like uh, Grab, you have to just give a job, arrive, collect, and send. No need to call or this. So it will be easier for deaf people to work. 
But before she can begin receiving jobs using the app, Alina has to first complete a vehicle training program to equip her with the skills necessary to drive a container truck on open roads. When I come to go in that small space, I'm still scared to go in. You have to be more alert and you have to be more aware. I find it very difficult for me to stay alert and awake all the time. All these look like ginormous carrot sticks. Sorry? All these look like ginormous carrot sticks. Pretty long carrot sticks at that, because they're orange. Yeah. Okay. That, that's just... We'll just focus on getting it done and mm -hmm. quickly. We focus on the speed now. Keep quiet and move. Yeah, yeah, chef. All right. Today was uh, indeed very, very fast because we got a lot of uh, like things we need to get done. How's this? Yeah, it's nice. It's good. So I cover up the pineapple filling. Roll, roll, roll. Start the roll already. Don't press too much. No. The dough will melt. The first step is a bit slow. If you spend too much time on one, <laughs> you're not going to go anywhere. Oh, no. We together are supposed to make in the thousands. Thousands? For Chinese New Year, we made up to 60,000. So, try to get the wrapping done quickly. One, two, three, four, done. Oops. Okay. It made me feel a bit anxious and panic mode. My mind had to make sure like everything had to be fast, but yet stay quality. My arms were in for a big workout. Create a little bit of a valve with the tongue. Oh, oops. oops. Put that in. Quickly push it around. One, two, three, four. Done. Okay. No, no, no. Not so many times. One time press. Yes. Fill already. Again. Oh, there. Oh, whoa. Oh, there. Don't get flustered. Just concentrate. Focus. What I do is I have a pattern. Count. One, two, three, four. Count. Ah, it becomes so, like music. Ah, so that way you keep a, a pattern going, a rhythm, and, and rhythm and a and beat, the, and the speed. One, two, three, four, down. Okay. Within four, it must go down. Okay. When we had to roll them, we had to do it in a rhythm, like just follow up with some music in my mind, and that way you can stay in flow, but and not lose track. It's one, two, three, and one, two, three, four. Okay. Bye. I think I get the. All right. I like this kind of rhythm. Just work on that forward. But I also felt like I was in a race to see how many like I could get done, and I was trying my best. I felt like a big urge to speed up with everybody, and uh, I think I almost uh, accomplished that. All right, well done, everybody. Take a pail with a little bit of soap water and wash the table first. Today I pushed Trevor a little bit harder than I normally would. It's still early, but it's time that he thinks about speed. What needs to happen at a certain speed? And that is almost career defining because your value depends on your productivity at the end of the day. It was a very good day. I think he did well. He can catch the idea. He can catch the technique. He may still be a bit slow here and there, but that comes with time. So while I enjoy working here at the bakery and while I enjoy working with everybody here, I haven't told them that I actually got a job interview as a uh, content producer at a uh, media company. So the job description is that I needed to create original and new video content and for this uh, company's uh, social media. It did sound like a dream job to me.
I've made plans to meet with Trevor today. He says that he has an interview with the media company at 4 p.m. and he would like me to be with him for that. But he told me to meet him at 3.45 at Bakery Brera. That doesn't give him enough time to get home to take the call. I wonder what his plans are. Uh, I didn't ask the people at Bakery Brera for some time off to do the interview because I thought it would be too troublesome for them. The interview timing was at uh, 4 o'clock, which was actually uh, at my, the end of my working hours whereas here at Bakery Brera. So uh, I needed to go out to some place nearby, some place quiet to have my interview because I didn't have time to rush home. Still feeling a bit nervous about my interview. Just be yourself, just share what you know. You're prepared. We've talked to Eugene, you've done your homework. It's about time. Showtime. Here we go. Oh. Hello. Hello. Oh, no, I'm you first. Uh oh. Uh, yes. Hello, uh, good afternoon. Uh, travel, right? Yes, that's me. So, maybe before we start, don't mind for me, can just do a bit of uh, self introduction. Okay. Hey, uh, alright, um, well, my name's uh, Trevor, her, yeah. and uh, I'm 22, and uh, I have a diploma in uh, multimedia and infocom technology. I have studied uh, a lot of um, uh, video editing thing and a lot of Adobe. Okay, have you completed your NS? Um, I haven't done my NS because uh, I'm exempted. Oh, okay. Exempted as in? Uh, because of health conditions or because of anything else? Because uh, uh, I have, um, uh, I have, uh, uh, I have autism. Oh, okay, understand, understand, no problem. Yeah. When Trevor outed himself as an autistic person, that was the very first time that he did that, and I thought that was really a moment of emotional growth, and he was for the very first time owning his identity as an autistic person. And it just went downhill from there. So have you taken a look at our content or Instagram, YouTube channel? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. Okay, so yes. uh, which one have you watched it? And which one do you like it more? This, this, oh, uh, actually, uh, sorry, uh, sorry. Um, uh, let me just uh, go back to, let me just uh, go back to which, let me just go back to the, the one. Huh? At that moment, as I was listening to his answers, I thought, Trevor, you didn't do your homework. I will suggest you to go to our YouTube channel and watch more of the relevant content because if you don't really like it, actually makes no sense for you to come on board and work with us. Oh, well, I like the content. And, well, I like the content of the videos, so I thought like maybe I could play something like maybe something different. Okay, this. no problem. It just came across as haphazard, as disorganized, and I would say that not impressive to any employer. I saw the uh, job, uh, on the job scope. It will be like from home, right? Oh uh, no, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Is going to office. Tuesday, Thursday is work from home. So when will I be like uh, be given any notice? Uh, by next week Friday, you are contacted. That means you are selected for the round. Okay, yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay, yeah. Fred, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, and we we'll get it. Oh, how was that? Oh my gosh, I feel pretty confident. He seemed like pretty interested. Hopefully, like you know, I'll be shortlisted. Strangely enough, after the interview, Trevor was really optimistic, but I felt that it was so important that I come clean with him. What else do you think you could have done but perhaps didn't do during the interview? I wish I could have shown them my uh, desi resume design. Uh, but uh, because it's my phone, I couldn't share. Okay, so a little technical hiccup there. Yeah. that I guess we could learn from, right? To perhaps do it from a, a computer next time. He asked about whether you liked the work that they were doing. How do you think you fared on that question? I think, I think uh, 
you could have shared your own take and your own uh, thoughts on the work that they did. Um, that's something to think about as well, yeah. so people see that you have opinions. I need you to ask how long more to the pasta. Can you just shout and say how long to the pasta? Now? Yes, just shout behind you. How long to the pasta? Nurul's back in Chef Andre's restaurant. Chef Andre is giving Nurul a taste of what it's like to work in a commercial kitchen by letting her help out in making her own lunch. Okay, this one is hot. Okay. Okay, so what I want you to do is to just slide. But Nurul's here not to get more training. She's here to let Chef Andre know that she has failed to secure a place for the food safety course. And she's accepted the fact that working for real in a commercial kitchen, even in a pop-up one, isn't possible. Oh, I want to say uh, thank you for the experience. I know, like you say, your passion is cooking. Use that passion to cook uh, in a small scale. You can go back and cook for your family tomorrow, cook nasi lama or your chicken chop. Whatever you do next, I wish you all the best. Thank you. How has it been like for you so far? From the very beginning to right now? I am disappointed. This journey has been both emotionally and mentally draining. Not forgetting the annoyed feeling when you call so many services, but the answer is not a definite yes, but lots of no's and maybe's. To me, it felt like they're trying to reinforce back that I am not able to um, take out the cost. I do need some time to think about what's the next step for me. At the end of the day, I still need to be financially independent and stable. I think for Nuru, it is a clear misalignment of ambition with her access to resources. Nuru is unable to access knowledge that she would need in order to grow. The way our society is designed right now, can things change? Can we redesign? Can we shift the paradigm? so that people get a fair shot at their dreams. While Nurul's dreams of becoming a cook have reached a dead end, the other three new hires have been on their jobs for a month or more. Running out of cans. Hmm? Running out of cans. Not a, not a can. Ah. From my observation, uh, comparing Weijian uh, from the start till right to this point, I think um, there were tremendous changes. He's much more responsible. He knows what are the tasks that he needs to do. Well, now you're very smart, ah. That's it. That's it. Don't worry. We know that um, Weijian is in good hands because he's happy. He's much more confident to perform the task. There's not much of feeling a lot of anger. What do you enjoy about working here? Yeah. Wei Lun, Jian Wei, mm -hmm. Jennifer Lin, Wei Hong. The rest are very friendly, nice and me. So Shu told me that you've already gotten your first paycheck. Yes. What have you done with the money? Save my money first. About uh, travelling to overseas. So that's what you're working towards. And how does that make you feel? Be proud of myself. It's been two weeks since Trevor's phone interview for a content creator role. I decide to drop by Bakery Brera for a final chat with Trevor to find out if he had received a response from the media company. Um, unfortunately, I didn't hear back from the last interview, which I did. And, um, it's been like over a week already. Yeah, and you know, I feel a bit disappointed. Well, rejection is definitely not an easy feeling. Yeah, especially when it's something that you really want. 
rejection is always a little bitter and hard to swallow, but do you think you've bounced back from that? I am trying to do the best I can to like be committed to go to work. I can't like any past rejections to like define me. It lit a fire in me, like I just have to like, keep pushing on and keep working harder to like fulfill my passion, so whether or not in media or baking. I just gotta keep moving on and do the best I can. I thought that he really bounced back quite well from the initial rejection. He showed that he had reflected on what he didn't do well enough and accepted it and focused on moving forwards. So that takes a lot of growth. I feel like I'm getting close to fulfilling my dream job. I'm just not 100% there yet because uh, what I'm doing now is just assisting everybody. So, like, I know there are lots of people who have the sore dream and have grown up to be pastry chefs, and uh, I would like to be one of them. What more I need is uh, practice, gaining confidence in myself, and uh, most of all, being independent. I better get back to work now. It was nice talking with you, Grace. Thank you so much, Trevor. All the best. Thank you. After a month of vehicle training, Alina should have been making her first deliveries as a prime mover driver at Hollier. What made you decide to leave? Because I think it's quite tough for me. I'm doing the OJD. I really work until 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. every day. So I have to keep on joining me. I cannot take it. On the job training, it, it's kind of like a rehearsal for the real thing, right? You're driving from one place to another in different weather conditions. From this experience, you feel that the real thing is going to be too difficult. Yeah. The reality for Elena is that she has to transit from being a freelance uh, grab rider. We start as early as 5, 6 a.m. in the morning because we need to go to the yard, go to the port to pick up the containers and uh, it will end late. We were willing to put in time and effort to train her. But I think she is very aware of the liabilities that could be involved in maneuvering such a massive truck. If you knock into something, there's uh, lives involved and she has repeatedly mentioned that that's part of the fear that she has. And I think that kind of fear in her probably led her to, to think whether she's actually able to take this on for the long term. I really lose the confidence. I feel quite scared. I did a lot of uh, positive, I tried my best, but I really cannot take it anymore. So I have to take back, back to square one. I think lots of people are under the assumption that when you're deaf and disabled, you have no choice. You've got to hang on to every job opportunity that comes your way. You just suck it up. Now that is a very toxic stereotype that we need to dispel. Alina has given her best shot and she realises that nope, it is absolutely daunting for her. So she has made the very difficult decision to quit to say no. And I think that's perfectly all right. We got to recognize what are our own limitations. With Trevor, Nuru, Wei Jian and Alina, they're pursuing what you and I are pursuing as well. A vocation that excites them, that gives them skills that they can develop and apply where they are being paid fairly. They are being encouraged to grow. I don't think it's unfair for them to want those things. There are many factors that need to fall in place when it comes to chasing after the job that we think is the dream job. What were some things that Hollywood invested in or made allowances for to accommodate the hiring of Elena? As a digital uh, 
platform. We don't exactly own trucks. The oh. biggest thing that we have invested into was to temporarily lease a, a vehicle specifically for her. And uh, right now that vehicle will unfortunately have to be put out to the market again for rental to another company. We have also have to adjust some of our internal workflow. We actually have a dedicated staff internally to guide her as a mentor. Having said that, I think the, the company is very proud to be able to have attempted this process with her. I think she actually um, did do her absolute best. I have told her before she left as well that, you know, don't give up. Right? If any case, our doors are always back open, but uh, I leave that decision back to her. Even for the most well-intentioned employers, the realities of a job scope, work environments, safety concerns, and economic pressures make it challenging, if not downright impossible for them to cater to the needs of individuals with disabilities. At the end of the day, endings like Trevor's and Wei Tian's are hard to come by. Now, if we want to pay more than just lip service to our commitment to a more inclusive society, we need to go beyond training and guiding persons with disabilities. On top of grants and subsidies, we need to offer holistic assistance to employers so that they can consider persons with disabilities as their new hire.